Hello everyone, welcome back to another Total War Warhammer um, battle here, I was going to say playthrough. A multiplayer battle, we have the forces of the Greenskins versus the Vampire Coast. This time being led by Skarsnik, because goblins, they need love too. So Skarsnik, um, actually is, I think is decent in this matchup because he is an anti-large armor piercer with poison damage, so he can go really well against a lot of what the Vampire Coast is going to bring in terms of uh, like damage, because they have, let's say, a Count Noctilus on top of his ship as a large target. So I think Skarsnik fits pretty well in a Vampire Coast uh, matchup, and again, Goblins need love too. So um, if you like any kind of, you know, Orc Boys, we've got some Orc Boys. The front line is made up of a bunch of Orc Boys mixed in with a bunch of Savage Orcs, just the basic Savage Orcs that didn't spend any extra money on the biggins because we went super wide for this formation so you can see here the infantry line just boys and savages led by Skarsnik. the back line has a total of four of the night goblin squid hoppers which are the armor pierces anti-infantry poison attack dealers which are very fast cav again we're going super wide so we got four of them spread across here in the, in the entire line including dirkic squigs the renowned unit which is over here uh, buried in a forest right now. Also spread along this entire line, we have three Orc Boar Boy Biggins to try and bring some extra oomph against large armored targets like crabs or any large creatures that the Vampire Coast can bring. And then for spell casting, we have a basic Orc Shaman with the buff spells and then one offensive spell with the Brain Buster. I also typically take the Protective Scroll, you can see the icon down there, the blue icon, because it does give us some damage resistance for, I usually put it on our Lord, and it's what, like 60 seconds? Let me just double check this real quick. It's a very cheap scroll. 22, sorry. 22% damage resistance for 57 seconds. I usually put it on our Lord if they start getting focused. Because, you know, adding to the durability of your Lord is never a bad thing. It's a very cheap uh, scroll to take. Um, then on top of that, all of that, already super wide, we also brought two Goblin Wolf Riders tucked into the corner right here. They're not in a forest, but because of the, how the terrain is set up, they are currently blocked by line of sight, which is why they show as stalking currently. We are now being charged, that's my army, we're now being charged by two deck droppers with bombers, which uh, you don't see these too often, so we're going to see how they fare up against the matchup with the greenskins here. Uh, in theory, they do a lot of good missile damage against the low armored units of our massive infantry line, but we'll see if they do well or not. In the front line for the main vampire coast formation here, we have a bunch of zombie pirates with pole arms. The middle line is made up of the shade wraith gunners, which are the long range magical damage uh, renowned units. And then we have a normal unit of deck gunners over here, which both I think are pretty good. In the um, mid mid line, mid back line, we have two groups of sirens, which brings some terror to the battlefield, which can be very devastating versus the low orc uh, morale that they have. And also, they can do pretty good against uh, black orcs, too. And then also in the back back, we have two carronades protected by a depth guard with pole arms. And then, of course, I already mentioned Count Nox is up here with his summoning ability. He brought the Withering, which is a debuff, and uh, more summons and invocation of Nahek. And that is going to be their army. Let's press play here. As we take a long march across the battlefield, we're just going to ignore these because we have to. I did not bring any anti-air um, for this battle. Sometimes, as you've seen in the past, I will bring Orc Air Boys in this matchup. But this time, I just wanted melee. I just wanted a full melee wall going down the throats of the Vampire Coast. Right now, we're going to hold off on our goblins because we don't want them to go in here too quickly because they have a lot of forces in the back that can kind of stop them. Also, the only approach that I can take is through this narrow field right here to get into the back. So, again, they got the pole arms. They had the sirens, so I'm waiting for our Jerkic Squigs to come up over here. We have some Orc Boys behind them. And then also on this flank, we have more Jerkic Squigs. I'm sorry, normal Squigs heading up. So, the idea is we overwhelm the back line with all the Squigs here, 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 and here. And then we also rush the goblins. So, that's six fast-moving units to try and tie up their two carronades and try and get into the deck droppers right here which have been firing on our savage orcs and with their um, morale lowering ability they have almost already routed these savage orcs savage orcs barely holding on probably because of uh Skarsnik being close giving him or giving them their morale buff meanwhile you can see here the bombers have been hitting us the entire time they have done some damage to the savage orcs but really most of that has been done by the shade wraith gunners these deck droppers or sorry deck gunners have been shooting into these savage orcs so they've been doing decent damage there so really like the actual bombers kind of like their ground bearing counterpart Parts. not amazing as it turns out not really that amazing it, it looks cool a lot of you know bright flashes but they don't really do that much damage right now you can see that we're finally going to unleash our squigs into the wild we're going to try and get into these deck gunners these sirens are trying to react here they're going to get into our jerk and squigs there but we're going to be able to tie up this siren group a little bit and allow the time for our other squig hoppers to get here these circus quick hoppers are going to go into the back of the normal deck gunners and now we also have the two um wolf riders coming in they're going to try and hit the carronade withdraw from the deck gunners or sorry from the death guard then these quick hoppers are going to come 
around, hit the other side of the carronade. So that's going to go to happen back in the back. Right now, we have a full bone on wall being sent by Skarsnik here. We're going to cast Brain Buster on these Sirens to try and do a lot of magical damage to them to try and help the fight with these quick hoppers right there. And pretty quickly, you're going to see with the wall and our Orc Boys, Savage Orcs, they're going to pretty much overwhelm the poor zombies with pole arms. You see the health bars of them dropping very, very quickly. Over here, we're throwing two of the Orc Boy Biggins against Count Noctilus. I should be throwing Skarsnik in here, but he was tied up with the infantry formation, and they all just did a massive charge. So he's actually going to be fighting these Sirenes over here for a little bit before we finally pull him away, because this ideal matchup here is against Count Noctilus. We want his damage and his poison damage to be on Count Noctilus to try and kill him as fast as possible. Meanwhile, on the back line, we have already destroyed one of the deck gunners because our squick hoppers were able to get in them, and they are very squishy units. And we also managed to destroy the other deck gunner because, again, we had these squick hoppers in their back. And even though they are ethereal, they just have low hit points. And we, um, I think we also cast a spell on them as well with the Orc Shaman who is now up here supporting our front line right there. The bombers still throwing their bombs, but really not doing too much. We've already almost overwhelmed the uh, left flank. The only thing holding it right now is the Sirens fighting against Skarsnik and his uh, boys nearby. Meanwhile, the backline is still being terrorized by our fast movers. They have uh, routed a couple of them because of the Death Guard with pole arms. So the, the Death Guard are going to be chasing these guys off the field. But that's also good because it's leaving these two carronades open. And we've already done a lot of damage to the carronades with our multiple charges of our fast movers. And we are going to try and finish them off here. We have two boys, uh, one Orc Boy and one Savage. And they're going to be charging the carronade because their protection has now left and is now out of position way over here. Uh, but they did do a good job of killing some of our squake herds, but they should have stopped chasing them because now these guys are open, so we're just going to charge up there. Skarsnik is now um, detached from the Sirenes, and is now going to be joining some wolf artists, I believe, up here to try and overwhelm Count Noctilus, and there's really not much left for the Vampire Coast. They only brought a few infantry units, and our Orc Boys and Savage Orcs just overwhelmed them to the point where I just have a massive amount of Orcs over here that's not really doing anything because they killed the uh, zombies, and there's not much left to kill. The Vampire Coast kind of went with a... I don't know if I really want to say an elite build, but they have a lot of ranged damage with those double deck gunners, with the double carronades. But we had so many units, um, because the greenskins can feel so many units that are pretty good for the price. And we were able to overwhelm their back end, and even though a couple of our Dirk Squid... I keep going Dirk Squigs. Even though a couple of our Night Goblin Squid Coppers did get routed by the Death Guard, along with one of our Wolf Riders, I believe, we still have just so many more units. We still have, I think, all three of our Orc Warboy, Warboy Biggins. Skarsnik was still alive, going at it against Count Noctilus. And that is going to be a victory for the Greenskins against the uh, Vampire Coast. So this player, I think, built more focused against like a Black Orc Elite Greenskin army, which is something I typically don't bring against the Vampire Coast because I think it's easy for the Vampire Coast to shut down just a massive line of, um, well, maybe easy isn't the right word, but they have a lot of tools to shut down a Black Orc main battle line that charges them with, you know, cheap access to a lot of handguns. The deck gunners that they brought two of would have just devastated our Black Orcs. Uh, the Death Guard are not really an ideal counter, but they were there to try and protect the back line against Orc Poor Boy Biggins. Uh, and they did that job pretty well. They killed a lot of Squigs and some Wolf Riders back there, but I never actually threw an Orc Poor Boy Biggin back there. They were just supporting our front line in the fight against Noxless. But again, I think this was more geared to fighting a smaller, more elite Orc army, but I like to go wide because, listen, I love massive green tide charges with the wall, and it's it's great, and it's a really good feeling. Um, but anyway, good game to Lang Langao, and I hope you enjoyed. And let's go watch a cinematic view of the battle. The Vampire Coast, I think, is a very solid faction, but it is a real shame that just some of their units are basically useless. Like, anything associated with the bombs is kind of useless. Um, a lot of, like, the bloated corpse and stuff. You can have some strategies with stalking a bloated corpse and then making some work done. But overall, like, the bloated corpse is kind of a waste. It's just kind of like a meme unit. And um, the husks, I think they're called. Like the, the unit of bloated husks, basically. Well, not bloated husks, but the, you know what I'm talking about. They're also kind of not great. But they still got a lot of good units. And I'm not entirely sure what their build has to be to counter a very wide um, green skin formation like this. Because, like, the zombies just kind of melt too quickly underneath uh, Savage Orcs. I'm sure there is a build there, but I think I think the wide green skin tide against Vampire Coast is really good. Maybe focus on more like of the basic zombie pirate uh, gunners, like the basic guns, pistols, and all that. 
they're pretty cheap. They're also really, pretty good. And these poor deck guns, man, they just, they melt so fast. Give me that wall. I think that's a fist of gore going on these savage orcs on top of the wall. They just eat through these zombies so quick. We just overwhelmed them with so many fast moving units. And then I forgot to move these guys back. They were supposed to do a quick charge and then get out of there, but yeah, I kind of left them for the Death Guard to deal with a little bit. Yeah, like the boys, they just shoot through the zombies so fast. definitely hold back parts of this formation for sure. If you can keep the orc boys off, the uh, orc boy biggins off of them. They can hold back orc boys and savage orcs for a long time. Savage orc biggins though, maybe not. Maybe not those. So there's a battle, I think it was a couple weeks ago at this point, where I showed the savage orc biggins getting buffed by um, the here we go, I think. And they went against the renowned crab unit with the guns on top of it and just shoot them to pieces. Pretty fast. The Sarines held up, but their ideal target is not necessarily a bunch of savage orcs. They want to get into you know, black orcs, but I didn't have any. Yeah, I'm squig offers. Ate up the carronades up there. Deck bomber's not doing much. And then the death guard were pulled away from the battle. I mean, really, they, yeah, that was. It was good, really good for me that the death guard got pulled away from this entire battle by chasing those um, night goblins. Because they were actually protecting Noctilus. Well, I don't think it would have changed the outcome of the battle too much. But they would have at least got a lot of kills on my Orc Boy Biggins. And maybe just some damage Carson or something. But in any case, hope you enjoyed the battle, everybody. And I always just love a good wall. It's my one of my favorite factions, for sure. Take care.